So the last question in the 1999 paper, question 11. We've got tangents to a curve. We've got this cubic curve here with two parallel tangents drawn. It says touching at P and Q, and it says the gradient of them is each. Each of them is three. Take a note of that. And then it said find the equation of these two tangents. I'll give them numbers. I'll call that one. I'll call that two. Right, for the first six marks. <coughs> well, tangents to a curve. You've got the equation of the curve. Differentiate it. And you'll have the equation for the gradients at every point in the curve. Every point in the curve has got three things. An x-coordinate, a y-coordinate and a gradient. A gradient for the tangent to that point. You'll need one of them to find the other two. It's better if you've got x, because then you can just feed it into the equations. And it's a, just numerical. However, this time it's the other way around. I know that m is 3. That means that dy by dx is equal to 3. That means that 3x squared minus 9 equals 3. <coughs> well, there's only one mention of x, so I can just solve that by digging down and getting rid of all the stuff around it. 3, 3x squared will equal, take that across 12. x squared will take b, take the 3 across and divide 4. Then x will be, take the square root, plus or minus 2. <coughs> so p is going to be at negative 2, and q is going to be at 2. <coughs> so I'll put those two bits down. If x is negative 2, then feeding that back in, that means y is going to be negative 2 cubed minus 2 minus 9 times negative 2 plus 4. So that's negative 8 plus 18 plus 4. That'll be 14. So I know that p is the point negative 2, 14. Maybe I'll put a wee note here for later. Negative 2, 14. And, oh, it's a pity I'm room to keep it nice and symmetrical. If x is 2, then y is going to be 2 cubed minus 9 times 2 plus 4. So that's going to be 8 minus 18 plus 4. <coughs> so that's going to be negative 6. So Q is the point 2, negative 6. Just cleared the space there, so I've been writing too big. Right, now for the equation of two tangents. Tangent at P, that'd be equation one. So for the tangent at P, it's going to be y minus b equals mx minus a. I might not write that again this time. So y minus the y coordinate, 14, said the gradient was 3 for them both, times x minus the negative 2, or just put that as a plus 2. So I've got y equals 3x plus 6 plus 14 is plus 20 which I'll call 1. So it's one of the tangents, y equals 3x plus 20. Second bit, y minus the y coordinate, which is a negative 6, so y plus 6 is 3 times x minus 2. So y is going to be 3x minus 6 minus another 6, which is minus 12. I'll call that equation 2. So it wasn't too bad for the first part finding the equations of two tangents. That was an easy six. Now it's the second bit that's interesting. So for part B, find the shortest distance between the lines. Now the shortest distance between two lines is the distance at right angles. So what you could do would be this. This is one way. Now these points aren't necessarily opposite each other. It's just unfortunately I've got to go it drawn. You could take the perpendicular line, that's unfortunately so close, through P, and find where it cuts and then work out the distance between P and N. So I'll do that, just for comparison to what you could actually do later. Right, so for the line through P, if I want the line PN, well, I know it's gradient. The gradient's going to be, if the gradient of the line P of line 1 is 3, it's going to be negative a third because it's perpendicular to it. So the equation will be Y minus the Y coordinate is the gradient, negative a third, times X, minus the x coordinate, so it'll be plus 2. 3y minus 30, 42 is negative x minus 2. I'll just write that as 3y equals negative x plus 40. And I'll call that equation 3. So that's this line here, equation 3. And the idea is going to be find the coordinates of n. <coughs> so that'll be substitute then ends where 2 and 3 cross, so I'll substitute 2, substitute equation 2 in 3. So where that says y, I write, whoop, where is it, there, 
I write 3x minus 12 is negative x plus 40. Innocuous looking just now, so that's minus 36 is negative x plus 40. Negative x will go across and make that up to 10x, and that'll make that 76. So I've got 76 upon 10, which I'll leave like that. I know I could cancel it down, but it's easier working with tenths later on. And then to find the y coordinate, <coughs> may as well put it back into this one, which means y is going to be 3 times 76 upon 10 minus 12. Well, how many tens is that going to be? 18, 22 minus 120, so that's going to be 108 over 10 for the y coordinate. Which means, I'm going to space again, n is the point 76 upon 10, 108 upon 10. I'll take a note of that as well. 76 upon 10, 108 upon 10. Right, so using up tons of space this one. So finally, to get the distance, the shortest distance between the lines, that would be the same as the length of Pn. We'll use the squares to avoid having lots of square roots. So that'll be the difference in the x coordinate squared. So that'll be 76 upon 10 plus 2 squared. Difference in the y coordinate squared. That'll be 108 minus 14 oops, squared. Better put these back into tens. So that'll be 20, that'll be 96 squared, and that's going to be 140, that's negative 32 upon 10 squared. Now, <coughs> won't be using a calculator because I want the exact values, but you can see a connection here, that's 3 times that. The squaring of that will remove that negative, but 96, even though that's 3 times that, is being squared. You'd have to consider 96 is 3 times 32, which means 96 squared is 3 squared times 32 squared. So what you've got is 9 lots of 32 squared plus another lot of 32 squared. So I've got 10 lots of 32 squared over the both say 10 squared. So Pn, or D if you like, is going to be the square root of that. So it's going to be the square root of 10, and then those square roots are easy. 32 over 10. That will now cancel down to 16 upon 5, and I'll put the root 10 afterwards. So the distance between the lines is 16 upon 5, root 10, which is what you wanted in the first place. Now, now I've cleared away everything. I've redrawn that diagram and taken away all that information about coordinates of points and so on. Because all I really need to know is the gradient of these lines and where they cut the axis because the simplest way to get the distance between them is to pick a very useful point, is to pick this point here, which is at 20. This other line cuts at negative 12. So straight away there's a distance that I know. There's this distance here. It may not be the shortest distance, but I know this distance is 32. The distance I really want is the distance at right angles. That's the distance I really want. I'm just going to mark in these two angles here. Now that forms a triangle. The gradient also forms a triangle. A gradient of 3 means if you go horizontally along for 1, the line will lift you up 3. But of course that line, I suppose, should have been parallel to that one. That was a rotten drawing. I'll just draw them parallel now because they weren't actually drawn properly to scale. A gradient of 3 means if you go 1 along, then you go 3 up. Now, these lines are parallel, they go in the same direction. Vertical, horizontal, those two must be complementary. So those two must also be complementary. You've got a pair of similar triangles. This triangle's got one three, that makes root 10 for that side. Which means once you've drawn those pair of triangles, I can work out D just by using the two similar triangles. If triangles are similar, corresponding sides are in the same ratio. D corresponds to its opposite the circle, it corresponds to 1, equals the 32, because it's from the same big triangle, opposite the right angle, corresponds to root 10, which means d equals 32 upon root 10, or rationalising the denominator, multiplying the top and the bottom by root 10. I've got 32 times root 10 upon 10, cancel that down, 16 root 10 upon 5. And there it is, straight away from similar triangles. It's very useful to remember, the gradient forms a triangle.